um, there will be two parts to this video. Uh, this video will be looking at the role angiotensin 2 has in the body and how it increases blood pressure and then look at a simplistic diagram to see how it is formed. Um, so we begin here. A low plasma or a low blood pressure in the body triggers the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The main hormone out of all this is angiotensin 2. You might not want to know this but it is interesting to note that angiotensin 2 works by binding to angiotensin 1, angiotensin 2, G protein receptors um, and work through the second messengers glycerol and inositol triphosphate um, activated by phospholipase C. Uh, angiotensin 2 inhibits activity of also adrenaline cyclase. Um, and if you do not know what these are, look at my G protein video I provided previously. So what role does angiotensin play in the body? Well, angiotensin 2 plays many roles in the body, but I am only going to mention five, and these are the most important, I believe. So angiotensin 2 stimulates the adrenal cortex, which are the outer part of the adrenal glands above the kidneys. And this adrenal cortex secretes a uh, hormone called aldosterone. This causes the kidneys to reabsorb and retain sodium and chlorine molecules in the kidneys. Now therefore, higher levels of these will cause a rise in blood pressure. Now angiotensin 2 also targets the brain, stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete antidiuretic hormone or ADH. Now ADH causes water retention in the kidneys. More water retained with more sodium causes increase in blood pressure. Now angiotensin 2 also causes the brain's hypothalamus to stimulate the thirst center. Uh, that's not a hypothalamus by the way, that's a pituitary gland. But now the thirst center obviously causes us to drink more water, uh, causing an increase in blood pressure. Now the heart is also targeted which may cause hypertrophy and this means it's increased muscle mass of the heart but this is usually long term. Now angiotensin 2 also finally causes uh, arterial constriction um, and this obviously causes an uh, increase in blood pressure. More resistance in blood vessels equals high blood pressure. So let's recap um, quickly. So low blood pressure causes the renin angiotensin aldosterone system to kick in, making the final product angiotensin 2, which then targets other parts of the body, um, such as these five mentioned here, causing an increase in blood pressure. So let's draw a small diagram showing how angiotensin 2 is formed and how it affects the many organs around us. I will firstly explain it to you in the most basic and then I will go into a little bit more detail. So here is a systemic and pulmonary circuit. Uh, the blood vessels which travel all around the blood, the, the blood pressure suddenly drops. Uh, that's not, that's blood pressure by the way, drops the blood pressure. So our journey begins in the brain. The brain senses low blood pressure and sends a signal to the kidneys to secrete renin. Uh, the kidneys itself also detects changes inside its cells and secretes more renin. So renin goes in the bloodstream. Renin is an enzyme and while it floats in the vessels, it comes across angiotensinogen. Now, angiotensinogen is secreted by the liver and is an inactive form of angiotensin 1. So what renin does is that it helps activate angiotensinogen, converting it into angiotensin 1 or AT1, as in AT and 1. Um, so 
Angel Tenson 1 continues to its travel through the body and goes to the lungs where it gets converted into Angel Tenson 2 um, by an enzyme called ACE. Um, ACE stands for Angio Tensin Converting Enzyme. And as the name suggests, it converts Angio Tensin 1 to Angio Tensin 2. So ACE is actually found all over the body, but it's dominant in the lungs. So now we have Angio Tensin 2 as our final product, or AT2. Um, it, it causes all the, uh, the physiological changes mentioned before. It stimulates the brain to secrete um, antidiuretic hormone, causing water retention in the kidneys, as mentioned in the previous diagram. Um, and it stimulates the thirst center, the brain's thirst center. Angiotensin 2 targets arterioles, causing vasoconstriction, as mentioned again. And then it travels to the adrenal glands, which is above the kidneys. It binds to the receptors in this gland, which stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone. So let's go back to the start and look at it in more detail, this diagram in more detail. So the brain senses low blood pressure. That's not too hard. Low blood pressure. The brain targets your sympathetic nervous system to secrete noradrenaline. Not adrenaline, sorry, that's a mistake. To target the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidneys, um, which secretes renin. So the juxtaglomerular cells secrete renin. Noradrenaline actually binds to the B1 adrenergic receptors, which, which work through the cyclic AMP second messenger system. Um, the kidney also senses low blood pressure, and these specialized cells called macula in the kidneys, called macula densa, senses a am low amount of sodium and chlorine causing it to stimulate the juxtaglomerular cells to secrete renin. The juxtaglomerular cells does not only secrete renin, um, it also sometimes secretes prorenin, an inactive form, but this form is easily converted into renin before entering the bloodstream. So renin is traveling in the vessels and comes in contact with angiotensinogens, which is secreted by hepatocytes of the liver. Renin is an enzyme and converts the inactive angiotensinogen into, into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 travels to the areola of the lungs where another enzyme called ACE converts it into angiotensin 2. Now ACE also inhibits the activity of bradykinin. What, what is bradykinin? Well, it inhib inhibits, and bradykinin is actually a vasodilator, and it lowers blood pressure. But what we want now is high blood pressure. It is interesting to note, though, that people who suffer from low high blood pressure take ACE inhibitors, right? Now, these inhibitors not only prevent angiotensin II from being made, but also allows bradykinin to function normally as a vasodilator, lowering blood pressure. Now, however, though, um, what scientists found out recently is that bradykinin also plays another role in that it binds to mast cells or in the heart, which then secrete kinase. Now, what is kinase? Well, kinase also acts as an enzyme which converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So there are two enzymes which can convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, ACE and kinase. I'm sure there are others, but they're not as popular. So back to angiotensin 2. So it stimulates, angiotensin 2 then stimulates the brain's hypothalamus to make antidiuretic hormone, releasing it from the posterior pituitary. ADH causes water retention in the nephron's distal convoluted tubules. It also stimulates the hypothalamus's thirst center. Um, angiotensin 2 binds to receptors in the blood vessels also, causing the atrial vasoconstriction. Angiotensin 2 also then binds to receptors on the adrenal cortex. Now it works through uh, di um, diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate second messenger process, so phospholipase B. Uh, this causes secretion of aldosterone in the bloodstream. Aldosterone targets co collecting ducts and distal convoluted tubules in the kidneys to retain sodium, cal, um, chlorine, and also water. 
all this mechanism increases blood pressure. Blood pressure, sorry. So thank you for watching. Please comment and uh, 